Packet people, my packet people, welcome back. It's great to have you back on the channel. So again, we've got another very interactive, fun series that we're having with Ben, Mr. Nahamsek himself, Mr. Web Hacker, who's been taking us through the basics and getting going with web hacking. Welcome back, Ben. Great to have you. Thanks for having me again. It's been fun doing this, and hopefully I get to teach people something cool today. I, I think you're going to, and I'm pretty excited about your topic. Now, last time we were talking a bit about doing some active recon. So, all right, we've got a site. We've been we've identified one either through a bounty program or some other project. How do we start to do some website recon? Yeah, so recon is like a very broad thing, right? Like reconnaissance means just identifying every bit of digital asset a company owns. That could be IP addresses, it could be a, their autonomous system numbers or ASN, which is the list of IP addresses that they own. Uh, it could be the databases, it could be servers, web hosts, the websites, APIs, whatever, right? But for the sake of this, because it's, it's the most common one, we're just going to purely look at uh, looking for assets under a particular domain. Again, this is this, we could go on for an hour, two or three hours talking about this, but just a very basic way of doing it is just looking at what a website looks like. So before we start, I'm going to share my screen. While I do that, tell me what website, would, what company should we hack on? Ooh, that's a good question. And we're doing this legally, right? Legally, completely. Uh, again, uh, I can actually pull up the bug money program or VDP program if they have one and we can get started. Okay. So, hey, you know, I, I a lot of my viewers come from a networking background and hey, okay. who's a bigger networking company than Cisco? Can we go after Cisco? Oh yeah, Cisco actually does have a uh, VDP. So I, don't, I can tell you that off, off the bat, they do have a program. They have a huge program, multiple probably. But cool. you, you can see my screen. This is Google. You know, that's your best friend in anything you do in hacking, anything you do. I think on a computer, but also in recon. So what I can do is uh, one of the websites is for Cisco or Cisco dot com, and we can use you uh, Google by telling it, "Hey, I want to search." for everything that has the keyword site in it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. So you can say site is Cisco, and it's going to limit all of your searches to that website. This isn't hacking, by the way. This is just us using Google filters uh, to do this. And then you can see it's limiting all of it to that. And there's like uh, 400 results so far just for Cisco.com. But wow. I can also go as far as saying, hey, I want you to find everything in Cisco that has a keyword in the URL. So maybe I want to look for APIs. Is there something for API in there? There are some stuff that has API inside. These are docs. But you see there's like a developer side. These are developer docs. I don't want to see that. So I'm going to go and say minus developer. And that's going to limit developer to not be shown. And I want to say minus www domain website. And you can see now it's becoming more and more informative. You can see that's now giving us API endpoints for this different site that we can hack on. But what if I wanted to look for like maybe something like a login page what if i want to look for the title i can go hey i want you to look at the title of this every page that's been cached on google is there anything that has a, a login in it so you can see right here application cms idm login and so we can say i don't want to use www again and that takes it out and you can see like it's just giving us more and more things to look at and i know this is that doesn't make sense so far but it's just i want to show you how you can just zone in on a particular thing you want to look for and how to find them. And the reason why I look for logins, for example, is if there is a login, that means there's something important behind that page. So you can log in and test for different vulnerabilities. But you can also look for extensions. So if I know that I'm good at PHP or I know that PHP has a lot of vulnerabilities, I can type in extension or I could do file type instead of ext, I could do file type and it will do the same results. Different ones, but it would probably do them about the same. And you can see if I click on this, there is an index.php. So you can say it's just giving me PHP sites. But this is all really manual. This is the first step I take. This is the first place I go to when I want to hack on a new company. I just go, okay, I want to look at JSP files. And it just brings those all out for me. You can see there's like a Jira site right here. There's a partner notification, product configuration, which you know you can click on and it's a PHP site and everything here for me everything you see here is something that I would test for anywhere that I can put something like a input like a text I will test out for and then click around the side as well so this is just a high level of it uh, that you look at there's also something called a certificate transparency uh, server uh, sorry a certificate transparency 
uh, database. This is where every company that has it's, uh, that has created a certificate or a SSL certificate for their site has been indexed. My favorite one is cert.sh. You can see I've already clicked on it probably a million times. You can type in a company name, a domain name, and it will give you everything that has a certificate attached to that name. So we're going to do cisco.com. And this is the reason why you just says it's better than Google because it gives you all of them and it's not just every page that has been cached, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's cool. Cool. So there it is. The demo gods are with us. But now you can see there are way more domains here. I can look at everything that's here. It's becoming a target for me. And the cool thing is it tells you when was the last time it was seen? When was it logged? Was it logged before 2015? No, but it was not logged after 2017. So it reappeared, whatever that looks like. But you can see there are just tons of different domains. And some of these may not actually open up. So you may have to use some tooling to see which ones are available. You know, Nmap is a great place to do this. You can see if uh, Nmap can see if port 80, port 443 are open on in, in any of these. But this is pretty much where you look and you do a reconnaissance. Nice. Wow. So, so, and this is nice too, because anybody can do this. It's not like you have to have a certain uh, VPN credentials or any type of access. So you can do this straight from, straight from your browser and do that kind of enumeration. Yeah. So I, I covered all that. Exactly what you said is correct. You know, you can, it's free. Anyone could do, it, but I want to cover why it's important one last time. The sure. reason why people do reconnaissance is you want to find, uh, depending on what your goal is for hacking, you want to find more assets to hack on. If your goal is to just find more vulnerabilities, you know, if a company has a dashboard, it has a, um, you know, a social media site, it has a, you know, API, it has, you know, it, maybe they have like different sub applications, right? If you think about, you know, the different user roles, that kind of stuff, you want to find those things. But sometimes you can also find the developer sites, the sites that are, that are being developed, that are released. Those could have uh, extra documentation that could give you a lead. Those could have endpoints or products that hasn't been released yet. It could be a completely brand new set that's being worked on, you know, because they're gonna they're gonna probably launch a new product. For example, uh, let's say it's a bank, they want to get into giving loans, right? That site is gonna be the loan site. So just you have to think about these different multi different uh, sub apps that you can find. A bank is a great example of it. I want to hack the main bank application, but what about the place where they take loans? What about the place to take credit card scores? What about the credit card site? What about the application that, you know, validates your income? What about, you know, these are all different applications you can find and hack on, and each of those could have different user data, PIIs, different components and things that you can test out. So it's just the whole goal of Recon is extending your attack network or your attack surface, but also finding things that are interesting that could lead you to understanding your target better and also being able to find more vulnerabilities. That's awesome. This is really good stuff, Ben. Thanks for sharing. So where do we go from here? I would say you should pick a bug bounty program to hack on and do some recon. Again, Cisco is a good one. IBM is a good one. The Department of Defense is a good one. They all have a program. It's free. Uh, it's legal. And also you don't have to like submit a resume. That's the beauty of bug bounties or VDPs. You don't have to submit a resume. You're a freelancer. You work on your own times, but get your hands dirty, jump in there and see if you can find some bugs. Cool. And what do you want to show us next? And then we'll come back next time and actually look at some vulnerabilities and what they look like hands-on within a lab, or maybe we can find some CTF that we could do together. That sounds great, man. Okay, well, hey, thanks for coming back to the channel and we look forward to that next session and we'll definitely be bringing packets into the equation. So we'll see you next time, man.